to welcome everyone to Monster Mosaics. We're so excited to celebrate the Figgy's 15th anniversary with you. We want to wish um, a big thank you to you and your parents for joining us tonight and for Quad City Bank and Trust for sponsoring this wonderful event. For this class, you'll just need your art kit, a pencil or pen, and some scissors. And if you have any questions during this, feel free to raise your hand or just give us a little wave and we'll call on you and take your question. Um, I just wanted to quickly, while we wait to see if anybody else is able to join us, show you a quick video from our executive director, Michelle Hargrave. Hello, my name is Michelle Hargrave, and I'm executive director and CEO of the Figgy Art Museum. I would like to welcome you to our 15th anniversary celebration. A special thank you to our sponsors and partners who made our anniversary celebration possible. I would also like to thank all of you. Because of strong support from our community over the past 15 years, the Figgy has become a place where people of all backgrounds gather to learn, share, grow, connect, relax, and play. We're the cultural anchor of the Quad Cities, and last year we served over 86,000 people we are proud to enrich the lives of those in our region now and to help build a stronger tomorrow through art education and outreach programs at the museum, in our schools, in the community, and online through our virtual museum. The Figgy offers 17 special exhibitions each year, bringing world-class artwork from all around the world to the Quad Cities. And we have amassed an impressive art collection of over 4,000 works of Mexican colonial, Haitian, European, and American art. As we developed the programming for the 15 days of our 15th anniversary, we created events that celebrate some of the highlights of our educational programming, exhibitions, acquisitions, and collaborations with artists over the years. We also looked ahead to our next major exhibition, For America, paintings from the National Academy of Design, which will open on February 20th, 2021. This exhibition will tell the story of the developing America and American identity and the evolution of art and artists within our country through the oldest artist honorary society in the U.S., the National Academy of Design. For America will consist of over 90 works by renowned American artists such as Frederick Edward Church, Celia Bowe, Winslow Homer, William Merritt Chase, John Singer Sargent, Andrew Wyatt, and many more. I am thankful to all of you for your support and for joining us tonight. I know you will enjoy this special program, and I look forward to seeing you soon. Okay, and now I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Heidi. Heidi is our wonderful instructor for this evening. Um, she is an amazingly talented artist and educator here in the Quad Cities. She works for the Creative Arts Academy, the Davenport School District, and St. Ambrose University. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Heidi, and we're going to get our class started. Hello. Hi, Beckett. How are you? Well, welcome to Monster Mosaics. Today we get to dive into one of my favorite exhibits at the Figgy Art Museum. Maury Sendak had a wonderful exhibit featuring his drawings and illustrations from Where the Wild Things Are. So I thought I'd kind of dive into this and another exhibit that was a ton of fun to see, which was called Kids Design Glass. So the first thing we're going to do is introduce ourselves. So I'm Heidi Hernandez, like Tessa said. I have my son here, Oscar. Would you like to introduce yourself? I'm Oscar Hernandez. And um, is it Beckett? Would you like to say something? Yeah. Hi, I'm Beckett. Hi, Beckett. What grade are you in? First. First. Well, welcome, Oscar. is going into second. He was just in first. Are you going into second or are you going into first? First. Cool. Oh, awesome. Well, thanks for joining us tonight. All right, so if you got your packet, go ahead and open it up, this nice little goodie bag. Inside you should have your drawing book. You should have 
your own copy of where the wild things are, some pieces for our mosaic, plastic plates, and a paintbrush, some glue, and a little suction cup to hang your mosaic up. So let's talk monsters, because Maury Sendak loves monsters. And what I loved about his exhibit so much is that he really used his imagination. There is no idea too silly or strange or unusual. So I hope you really dive into your imagination with this. All right. So on our book, the first thing I'd love for you to do is to open this up. And on the inside cover, right here. You're going to write your name. All right, so you can see I have my name written down in my book. Okay. Everybody's got their name. You want to hold it up so we can see your name. This is me, Heidi Hernandez. And Oscar's getting his name written. Perfect. And Beckett. It looks like he ran to get something. I'll wait a second until Beckett gets. If you'd like to draw something, you can. Or you could, or it could. There we go. Beckett is back. Beckett's back. Awesome. Thank you, Beckett. All right. So, inside of this book, we're going to house all of our ideas about monsters, all of our creative ideas. So, on the first page here, what I want you to think about is we're going to do a mind map. I don't know if you've done a mind map before, but we're going to just draw a big rectangle. All right, inside of our rectangle, we're going to put a line right here. Kind of looks like a pair of pants. <laughs> then I'm going to do a line, like a triangle, that the point goes to that line there. And so this, it looks kind of like a Y right now. Yeah, it looks like a Y inside of a box. You got it, dude. All right, up in this top triangle area, we're going to describe what a monster is. So how would you describe a monster? Would you describe it as something scary, or how would you describe a monster? Scary? Mm, I'm going to say a monster. What are the other two places? Okay, I'm going to say it's a unique creature. What do you got, Beckett? What do you think of when you hear the word monster? Have any ideas? What do you hear when you hear the word monster? What do you think of? Scary. 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 Sometimes monsters look silly or they could be all kinds. There's all kinds of. Ooh, crazy. <laughs> so we have scary and we have crazy. Over here, we're going to write any of the words that come to mind when you hear, think of the word monster. Maybe if you think of it, maybe the movie Monsters, Inc., if you've ever seen that, or any monsters or creatures you can think of, we can write in some words. So scary might be one, crazy, silly. What are some other words you think of when you hear the word monster? What do you think? A curly tongue. <laughs> Ooh, a curly tongue. What else? Hmm. Mm -hmm. 
right in this section here, we're gonna draw anything that comes to mind when you think of monsters. So maybe you think of horns, or maybe you think of, hmm, what do you think of when you think of monsters? Draw little pictures. Maybe you think of something with a lot of eyes. I'm going to draw this curly tongue you're talking about. Maybe you think of sharp teeth. Fun to kind of just get your ideas out on paper. book and we're going to get some more ideas from famous artist and illustrator Maury Sendak. So if you want to get your book out too and follow along you can. All right let's read it together. Where the wild things are by Morris Sendak. And I happen to have Max right here. Hey guys, how you doing? Where the Wild Things Are, story and pictures by Maurice Sendak. The night Max wore his wolf suit and made mischief of one kind. Mm. And another. Poor dog. Yeah, he looks silly. He does. He has a beard. His mother called him wild thing. And Max said, I'll eat you up. So he was sent to bed without eating anything. That very night in Max's room, a forest grew. And grew and grew until the ceiling hung with vines and the walls became the world all around. And an ocean tumbled by with a private boat for Max. And he sailed off through the night and day and in and out of weeks and almost over a year to where the wild things are. That's the private, that's the, that's the title. That's the title, you're right. And when he came to the place where the wild things are, they roared their terrible roars and gnashed their terrible teeth and rolled their terrible eyes and showed their terrible claws. Let's do our monster. <laughs> Becky, do you want to do a monster face? <laughs> Till Max said, be still, and tame them with the magic trick of staring into all their yellow eyes without blinking once. And they were frightened and they called him the most wild thing of all and made him king of the wild things. And now, cried Max, let the wild rumpus start. Ready to make some monster noises? Beckett, are you ready to make some monster noises? I love this picture. You guys see how these monsters are going crazy. They're howling at the moon. Oh! Rawr! Rawr! <laughs> <laughs> Look at him. Max is king of the wild things. Now stop! Max said, and he sent the wild things off to bed without supper. And Max, the king of all wild things, was lonely and wanted to be where someone loved him best of all. 
Then all around from far away across the world, he smelled good things to eat. So he gave up being king of where the wild things are. But the wild things cried, oh, please don't go. We'll eat you up. We love you so. And Max said, no. The wild things roared their terrible roars. <laughs> and gnashed their terrible teeth. And rolled their terrible eyes. And showed their terrible claws. But Max stepped into his private boat and waved goodbye. And sailed back over a year and in and out of weeks and through a day. And into the night of his very own room where he found his supper waiting for him. Mm. And it, it was, was still hot. Fifteenth anniversary. Hey, okay, just like the thingy, right? Fifteenth anniversary. All right, in our books, now we have some more ideas about monsters, right? Should we go on a scavenger hunt and try to find some interesting textures? Remember, textures are the way something feels or look like they feel. So let's go ahead and look through the books and see if you can find any textures. Beckett, see if you can find any textures that you think are interesting on these animals, and, on these wild things. And there's a real thing on the metal. Yeah, the metal right here has texture, doesn't it? This is real texture. So what do you think? As soon as you see something you think is interesting, we can practice drawing it. What do you think? You see any interesting textures? It looks like a broken screen. What do you think, Beckett? Scales. The scales. Oh, the scales. Let's practice in our book drawing some scales. That's a great idea. All right. Let's draw some scales. Scales are fun to draw. You can make little bumps. Like little hills. Make them touch. And I like to go on the very top of my hill here. I don't want to fall in these little valleys. I want to stay on the top. So I'm going to hop from top to top to top to top. And on the next one, I have to start up in the air and I hop from top to top to top to top. Cool. So scales are an interesting texture. Do you see any other cool textures? These monsters? What do you think? Yeah, so you like feathers. Feathers or hair? Ooh, feathers. Let's do some feathers. Feathers are fun. We can kind of make feathers like scales. What is that for? What is that for? So I'm doing kind of some diamond shapes and I can put some feathers. I'm, I make, I'm just making a real one like the one that has on a bird. You can even have them kind of sticking out from behind and overlapping, right? Okay. I I drew one that was from a bird. You did you drew one that was from a bird? Yeah, that fell off a bird. Oh, that's cool. And then what else did you say, Beckett? Fur. Fur. There's all kinds of fur, right? You could have a kind of like Little lines make fur. We could have a kind of jagged. We can even have like smooth, long fur. Is this fur? Yeah, that's good fur. That's messy fur. I like it. It is messy fur. Do you want to hold up your fur? You're welcome to share anytime. Hey, this this looks like a crane. How I do it. Yeah, we can even do curly fur. Ooh, some of the monsters kind of have curly hair. You look at their. This kind of looks like a green. 
Well, I see an interesting texture. I think this one's pretty cool. This is feathers too, but they kind of look like rainbows. So they kind of go. So they're like scales, but then they have the rainbows inside. Do you see his in up here? There's all kinds of interesting textures that these monsters have. This this feather it turned into a crane. That's cool. Very creative. You see it? On the other side. Nice. Love it. All right. So we have some textures. We have some ideas about monsters. We're ready to turn the page again. We're going to make one more chart. This time we're going to make a rectangle again. And we're going to divide it in half. And then we're going to divide it in half again. So it kind of looks like a window now. Yeah, it looks perfect like a window. Then I'm going to draw two lines up here. One, two. And two lines down here. One, two. All right, on this side, I'm going to put my five favorite animals. Five favorite animals. Any animals that come to your mind? Hmm. <laughs> I have some pretty fun. Can you come up with five animals, Beckett? Oh, so yes. Yes. Yeah, what was your favorite? What animal? You don't know Santa. Really. You know what's your favorite? You know how, you know why I like the ghost? What? Because it's green. <laughs> oh, man. So, in this next column here, we're going to think of the textures of these animals. So, you're going to try to draw in the texture of a cat or the texture of a monkey. I'm going to go ahead and draw the texture of a cat and furry, but it has whiskers too, so maybe I could draw some whiskers or I could draw the wet cat nose. For the monkey, I could draw smooth skin. I could draw some more fur. Oh, a squid's kind of slimy. How can I make this look shiny? I could put a highlight on it. Draw tentacles. I oh. drew his tongue. <laughs> oh, that's a good idea. A dog's tongue is wet, huh? Yeah. And a cat's tongue's really rough. So if you drew a cat's tongue, you could put like dots all over it. Goats have horns, so I could put the horns, and they're kind of furry. Their fur is kind of more coarse. Chickens have bumpy feet, talons. And feathers. And a dog has most of my animals have fur. And ears sometimes are kind of softer, I think. Maybe a dog's nose is kind of wet. There we go. All right, so we're generating all these interesting ideas for when we get to design our monster. So we have ideas about texture. We have ideas from animals that we can incorporate. Just like Maury Sindak, you can see that he incorporated different animals when he was thinking of these monsters, right? I see parts of a chicken here. Look, I see claws. I see tail feathers. It, it looks like a minus. 
cool. So you could include the eyes of different animals or you could include the tails of different animals or if an aquatic animal, maybe you want to add fins. So, okay. On our next page, you get to kind of start drawing and designing what kind of monster you want to make. Is it going to include any of those animals you came up with or your textures? Or are you just going to create just a monster out of your imagination? That's up to you. While you're doing that, I would like to show you some monsters or some creatures from this really special exhibit called Kids Design Glass. This is what we're going to make it on. Yeah. Okay, so inside of this book, I will show you some really wonderful glass sculptures that were designed by kids. So what's really cool about this exhibit that was at the Figgy is that kids did the drawing. You can see right here, this was designed by Cameron and he's eight. And he created this little monster called Pip. Pip is a baby monster that loves to smile and laugh even though he's a little and he's cute and he gives a big cry. Also, Pip loves food, especially bananas. He will eat any speck of food in his sight. So you get to design your monster and we're gonna be making mosaics out of it. These glass monsters were really interesting to see and one student from the Quad Cities was chosen and they made a sculpture of their drawing. They make two of each of these and they give one to the, the child and then they keep one for their exhibit. So there's one, this might give you some ideas for your monster. Here's another one I really liked. This one's called Mixed Up Flamey. Well, Mixed Up Flamey can do fire with his head and he's pretty bad and he was born with a strange family. He can do different things, weird things, all right? This was created by Andrea and she was age 10. So these might give you some ideas for your monster. Yeah. You know what? What? It's a cat dog. That's a good idea. It has a dog's body and a cat. Wow, I love it. Here's another one. This one's called the Firefish, and it was created by Carter, who's seven. The Firefish lives. Hey, that's my age. <laughs> yeah, he lives in the crust of the lava deep in the ocean. He only eats jellyfish. He's 20 feet long and is only seen by the Martians that live in the volcanoes at the bottom of the sea and he never sleeps. Isn't that cool? So maybe you'll put some fish parts on your monster. I don't know. Well, I'm mixing a cow with a dog. You're mixing a cow with a dog. That's a great idea. This is Bob the Boxhead and he likes to jump over the moon. So okay, you can make a monster just out of shapes. So hopefully this gives you some ideas. The Figgy is also going to be um, taking you on a tour of Hot Glass Studio in a couple days, I think on the 14th. So if you're interested in seeing how hot glass is made, um, that's another class they're gonna be offering for their 15th anniversary. All right. The light. Oh no, it's okay. All right, so we're going to draw a monster. If you take out your... I did it. This is going to be how big your monster mosaic will be. So if you wanted to trace this, you could. All right, and you'll want to think about... Here's one that's already done. You'll want to think about making your... Feature is large so that when we start to lay the mosaic pieces on, they kind of come out. Because if you draw it real small, of course, it can be harder to cut the little pieces. So when you draw and design your monster, you want to do it nice and big so that it'll be easier to piece together your how, mosaic. How do you fill this barcode off? Um, I think you just have to go in. If you can't, you can just lay it on the side without the barcode, and you can do that in a little while. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and design a monster. Maybe this one will be hurt squid so maybe it'll have some long <laughs> and old. You can design whatever kind of monster you want. Maybe this one will have three eyeballs. 
There's your monster jar. I'm gonna draw big. Maybe draw it a little bigger than that. Maybe turn it sideways, huh? So it looks better. That's a good start, so. Maybe he has some sharp I teeth. think it, I think it would, I mean, I, I think it should be the um, right way, the other one. What? Yeah. It's supposed to be hung this way. Okay. So maybe I'll put some bird feathers on or some wings. Hmm. Okay. Maybe I'll make them polka dotted. It's up to you. So when are we gonna do the mosaic mosaics, Mom? Okay, next we're gonna do the mosaics. So I'll <laughs> let you draw your picture. Right and as you I said. Think, yeah, but I, th I think you need to draw it a little bigger because, like I said, if you do it really tiny, it's gonna be hard to see your monster. So you wanna draw your cat dog really, really big on here. So draw his face really big. Next up, we have our envelope. And I can wait while you guys draw. <laughs> now, tell you about this it glass has studio. Turtle event. legs. <laughs> turtle legs. So, our glass studio event will be on Friday, August 14th. So, if you want to see how glass is actually done in a glass studio, they do have a virtual option or an in-person option. So you can visit the Figgy website and see more on the 15 events for the 15 year anniversary. And that's better. Good job. All right, you got your monster bucket? Awesome. Okay, so next you can just lay your plastic right on top. And then that way we can lay our pieces on top of this. So inside of your envelope, you can pull out your pieces. I'll help you with this. And there's a couple different ways you can do this. You can cut a lot of little pieces. Go ahead and put yourself on. Pieces one. Yeah. Are they in the envelope? Yep, they're in the envelope. And if they yeah. stick together, sometimes they stick together. That's okay. You can just pull them apart. Oh, I'm like, where are my pieces? Oh, right. right. There's, there's yeah. Not yet. Okay, and then you have some scissors. No, she's already half it. This is the first time I've ever made an mosaic. It's so there's a couple different ways you can do this. You can create it by using lots of little pieces like I did on mine. So you can cut little squares or little pieces out of these. Um, before you start cutting, you want to decide what color you want to make your monster. I, there is a bigger sheet in each of these packets, so my big sheet's yellow, so I might want to consider making my monster yellow or my background yellow. So since my monster takes up most of my picture, I will probably make my monster yellow and then maybe give them some details of these I'm gonna colors. Make, I'm going to make my monster blue. Okay, so you can either cut out a bunch of little pieces or you can kind of try to cut out part of the shape of your monster. So like if I wanted to cut this monster out, I could fold this in half and I could kind of cut out the shape. Ow, it hurts. <laughs> and you can oh, cut right through it. Kinda, it's kind of wacky. Little pieces, you can just cut the little pieces too. So there's different ways you can do it. What a candle's made out of? I think I'm gonna make the eyes. Blue. So see, like I did this and it's sticking together. I think I'm gonna make the eyes. I know it's so that smells kind of. So I can do something like that, and I could cut it apart, or I could use the little squares. It's kind of up to you what you want to do. I like how you're filling yours in, Oscar. That looks great. I'm gonna make it bigger on the picture. Yeah, I could cut these into pieces. That's small. There's leg. Eva, I don't know what you can do with these ears, and maybe I could spread these out a little bit. Well, I guess let's see. Yeah, he has three legs. He does. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You can cut them into squares or little triangles and kind of piece it together. It's fun. It's like putting together a puzzle. It's a lot of fun. You can stick it 
if you push down kind of hard, it, it sticks a little bit. But when we put, when we're done, we'll put over the this um, um, acrylic gesso to, to seal it in. All right. So then you'll want to think about what color eyes you want to make. Maybe I'll do orange eyes, and I'll save my red for my background. This one's still too long. So I can cut out my eyes. Okay. It's a lot of planning and fitting, and if it doesn't fit, you can change it, right? And it doesn't have to look exactly like you're drawing underneath, but it's nice that you can see through it and you can kind of copy your drawing if you want to. Look at these eyes. Ooh, I love your eyes, Oscar. That's awesome. I like the yellow on the inside of the eye. Look, and then we can cut some black. Make his paws. Oh. Yes. They have to be exactly the same, so it's okay if they're a little bit different. Mm -hmm. yeah. Or you might just do two paws on each one. Let's make this. Yeah, I do. Yeah. Um, how do we give guys up from the entire yeah, Let's see that one. Yeah, How many questions? Same tone, no. Hmm? Same. No. All right. Okay. You can see my monster starting to shape up. I might want to give him a mouth. We can do three. Four. Let's, well, let's see, because look, when we get more on there, like this one might only need one. And then this one might need two. For the space. You know what I'm That's a good triangle I put out. Push that one down. Yes, I love it. Okay. Mm -hmm. They're they're already kind of sticking to the piece. Isn't that cool? They kind of stick, and you can see them off. No, they don't turn up all the way. If you don't have them, give them claws instead. You can always alter your design. Okay, push them down. Oh. And how long will the gesso take? Good question. So once we have it all set up and the way we like it, I'll, I'll give you more time. I have a book I'd like to read you while you're working on your monster. So take your time. But once we have this all set up, then we're going to be um, using our paintbrush and the um, gloss medium to seal it in. You just cover everything. And then it takes overnight to dry. This takes a I'll have to set it out overnight to dry, but then when you're done, you get to hang it in the window. So you can see through it on both sides. And how will we get it home without it, right? I'm just curious. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Our home is far away. All right, we'll, we'll figure it out. All right, so while you're working on your monsters, I'm gonna read you one of my other favorite monster books. It's called... I need my monster. You got that from my room, didn't you? I did. This is Oscar's book. So go ahead and continue working, and I'll just read this book oh. while you're working. It's oh, a really yeah. great book. So. Here we go. Keep working. We're going to glue them down and share them. I'm, I'm, if you get done early and you want to write more in this book, this book is yours, and you can turn the page and give your monster a name and you can write a little story about your monster. So this is all for, this is a book all for your monster. You can create friends for your monster. You can tell us about his favorite food or things he likes to do or she likes to do or they like to do. Is this the only question I do? I'm going to go ahead and clear this out of the way. And read you this while you're working. These are great at monster ideas. Look at all these guys. Pretty to look. I have a ton of rays. This guy's going to work with his briefcase. I need my monster, written by Amanda Knoll and illustrated by Howard McWilliam. Tonight, when I looked under the bed for my monster, I found this note instead. Gone fishing, back in a week. Game. What was I going to do? 
I needed a monster under my bed. How was I supposed to get to sleep if my monster was gone? I tried to sleep, but it wasn't the same without Gabe. I missed his ragged breathing. His nose whistling. Scrabbling of his uncut claws. How would I ever get to sleep without Gabe's familiar scary noises and his spooky green ooze? It was no use. Gabe would be gone for a week and I just had to have a monster. I climbed quietly out of bed so my parents wouldn't hear me. Grown-ups have some strange ideas about monsters under beds. I knocked on the floorboards and scrambled back under my covers. I waited nervously. Would a new monster appear? What would he be like? Would his snorting be as cheerful as Gabe's? When I heard some creaking under my bed, I knew that the substitute monster had arrived. Good evening, said a little breathy voice. My name is Herbert, and I will be your monster for the evening. Herbert, what kind of name is that for a monster? You don't sound scary at all. Have you ever scared a kid before? Well, no, but I've read all the best books on the topic. Do you have long teeth and scratchy claws? I asked. No, but I have an overbite and I'm a mouth breather. Ooh, let's see, Oscar. Oh, I love it. What are you going to do for your background? Do you want to put some patterns or anything cool in the background? You can... No, but I have an overbite and I'm a mouth breather. Listen. <sighs> Herbert's panting was kind of scary, but it wasn't enough for me. Listen, Herbert, I'm sorry. I just don't think this is gonna work. It's nothing personal, but I really need a monster with claws. Picky, picky, Herbert complained. As you wish, I will go. There was some more creaking and Herbert was gone. There's Herbert. Some scratching warns me that a second monster had appeared. Good evening, he said in a high, silky voice. My name is Ralph. I understand you need a monster with claws. If you please, lean over and I will hold out in an arm for an inspection. I crouched on the edge of my bed, hoping to see a horrible, shaggy arm with sharp, ragged nails. Yeah, not funny. Use the scissors. I'm, I'm just using it. Okay. Instead, I was surprised to see a sleekly brushed fur with smooth, shiny claws. Excuse me, I don't mean to be rude, I asked. Is that nail polish? Yes, it is, Ralph replied. I believe professional monsters should always be well groomed. I could tell this was not going to work either. Sorry to disappoint you, Ralph, but I need a monster with scary claws, like Gabe's, I thought. I heard some more scratching and I knew Ralph was gone. A minute later, a third voice from under the bed rasped, Check out these claws, kid. I gathered my courage and I peered over the edge. The claws were impressive, jagged and dark, and razor sharp. So far, so good. I was a little nervous. Could, could you stick out your, your tail? I whispered, sure, but don't get scared. I peeked through my fingers at the slimy tail slithering over the foot of my bed. And that's when I noticed the bow. Are you a girl monster? Of course I am, she snapped. I'm Cynthia. Do you have a problem with that? Um, yeah, I do, I admitted. I Definitely need a boy monster. Boy monsters are for boys and girl monsters are for girls. Everybody knows that. Well, aren't you pretty? 
She sniffed and she was gone. Was I being too picky? No. I knew that my monster needed to be well clawed and menacing. The whole point of having a monster, after all, was to keep me in bed, imagining all the scary stuff that could happen if I got out. That light went out again. Then I heard a shuffling noise and some slobbering. A fourth monster was under my bed. Hey, the name's Mac. One look at his claws proved that Mac was a big, scruffy boy monster. I shivered. Ooh, maybe this one would work out. Those are excellent claws, but do you have a long tail? I leaned over to see. Nope, my tail's stumpy, Mac slurped. But I do have an unusually long tongue. Why would I be afraid of a long tongue? I asked. Well, I don't know, he said, trying to sound terrifying. You never know when I might lick you. <laughs> I fell back on the bed laughing. <laughs> <laughs> that looks funny. Well, if you're not even going to try to work with me, Mac whines. I held in my giggles. I really don't think you should send me away, he said. Kids who reject five monsters in one night. I did not reject five monsters tonight, I interrupted. My regular monster went fishing. Fishing, eh? Maybe you just left because you're so picky. Fine. I'm out of here. But I wouldn't expect another monster tonight if I were you. How was I ever going to get to sleep without my monster? I was, Ow, okay. <laughs> I was surprised to hear more creaking under the bed. Loud creaking. With scratching. I, I, I thought no more monsters were going to appear tonight, I said. Sorry I'm late, kid. Phew, it was Gabe. I thought I would enjoy fishing, but I didn't, he explained. Those fish scare too easily. No challenge at all. You, however, are challenging, my friend. You're almost too old to be afraid of monsters. Keep me on my toes. Ah, toes, a delicious snack. The bed quivered as Gabe's stomach rumbled with hunger. Now, if you don't mind, I'd like to start the evening off with an ominous puddle of drool. He peeked over the edge of the bed. Green ooze spread soundlessly from underneath. Then the bed trembled as Gabe unfurled his spiked tail. Ooh, it's nice. He was daring me to guess where he might pop up. I shivered. I pinched my finger with it is. It's okay. So you had some substitute monsters tonight, Gabe said, sharpening his claws on my bedpost. Were you not scared? And then Gabe started tapping. I could tell he wanted to know if I still needed him. No other monster can scare me like you. I giggled, diving under my covers and pulling them up tight. Through the blanket, I heard Gabe say. Eddie, I think Beckett has a question. Oh, I'm sorry, Beckett. Thank you. You put the glue on top. Yeah, are you ready for the glue? Yes. Yeah. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and take out our brush and our glue. And with your scissors, you can cut. You could cut the tape off or you could rip it off. I cut the tape off. Okay. And then you're just going to start gluing. If you have bigger pieces and you want to put a little glue underneath, you can. And then you're going to cover the whole top with the glue. And you want to put it on. Hey, where's my brush? It should be in your bag, buddy. 
Oh, okay. Um, you can go ahead and just spread it completely over the whole sheet. You can see it will look milky white, but it will dry transparent. But you'll you will have to let it sit out overnight. Before you start gluing it, can we see it, Beckett? Is there a way to hold it up without the pieces falling? Oh, that is awesome. What's your monster's name? Don't know yet? Um, wait. And can I put the gloss medium over the pieces? Yeah, you can put the gloss medium over the whole thing, over the pieces and over the plates, and it will huh? stick it together. Ryan, tell her it's Ryan. Ryan. Ryan, cool. Yeah, does your monster have a name, Oscar? I don't know. You don't know yet? I think it is Emily. Emily. Cool. Emily the cat dog. I think I'm going to name mine Mr. Ferguson. <laughs> That's what we call our cat when she's being mean. <laughs> That's what we call our cat when she's being mean. Through the blanket, I heard Gabe's soft, comforting snorts. Ha! I knew it. We were made for each other, he growled. When my blanket started to slip off the bed, I knew Gabe was ready to eat. Now if you could please just stick out your foot, he said. I'd like to nibble on your pinky. I yanked my blanket back up and scrunched in my feet so Gabe couldn't get them. <laughs> Look at his face. Oh my gosh. <laughs> No toast tonight, but you can have this. I offered, pushing a pillow off the bed. I didn't even hear it hit the floor. Ah, Gabe was back. The ooze was perfect. Everything was back to normal. I shivered again. I'd be asleep in no time. Oh no! I lost oh, no. the piece. If a piece comes off, you can put a little of the gloss underneath and then you can put some on top too. So you can think about what kind of kid your monster is going to find. Is your gonna monster going to show up under somebody's bed? I don't know. Maybe tonight. Never know. I'm going to stick that down. And I can glue on top. Oh no, I'm going mine upside down. Here's the hole. So this hole is where we're gonna hang it from. I'm gonna flip this guy over. So try not to glue it upside down. I have it the right way for, thank goodness. <laughs> thank goodness. Here we go. Gonna be so cool. This is gonna be so cool. When you get done gluing your monster, you can go ahead and tell us a little bit about your monster in your book. So you can give your monster a name and you can answer the questions about where your monster lives, what's its favorite thing to eat, what does it do for fun, what powers or talents does it have. Is your monster good or evil? And write those kinds of things in here. So that might get you started when you start thinking about a story. So you get to bring your monster to life with some kind of story. Okay, it's ready. It's ready, good job. It's a ready. It's a ready. You wanna put it over here so you can see it? You see how it looks milky white in some spots? Yeah. That will hold it down, that milky white, and it will dry clear. <laughs> okay, let's go ahead and in your book, you want to give your monster a name. <laughs> I stuck my head under there. <laughs> you did. Come on over here. 
So your monster's name is Emily, so you'll want to write that in your book. Mine's name is Mr. Ferguson, and he is from hmm, Los Angeles, California. And he likes peanut butter and banana sandwiches. talents are he is a really really good skateboarder and he's a good monster but he gets misunderstood some people think he's mean just because he looks a little different but he is really a kind monster he has a really kind heart You know why? What? This monster lives right down the street from us. He lives right down the street from us? See? 505. 505 30th Street. Oh, man. My monster lives behind the Hollywood sign, behind the H in the Hollywood sign. He hides when people come near. You know what? What? He was born. March 3rd, 2003. March 3rd, 2003. It's a date. It goes 333. Three, three, three. <laughs> oh, that's neat. 333. Three, three. What kinds of sounds do your monster make? Mm. Yours is a cat dog, so does it bark and meow? Yep. Yeah, that's cool. It can make some submarine sounds too. It can? Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> I can too. You want to do it so we can hear what it sounds like? No. No, you don't? But I can make all kinds of different sounds. You can make all kinds of different sounds. Would you like to hear a cat? Yes. Is that, is that Emily making that sound? No, that was is me. That you? Yeah. That was you. Yeah. Beckett, what kind of sound does your monster make? <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Are you writing about your monster? What? Yes, that you're writing about your monster. Yeah. Yeah, cool. You have to tell us about it when you're ready. Add R. No. I don't know, maybe. I don't know. Yeah. It's so cool. Yeah. That's cool. Okay, so Chicago. Did H. someone just say cow? I? Wait, period? No, I. C. Wait, no. C. C. <laughs> you think you're writing about your animal or your monster. I, I did fill the page. Tell us e. about them. Write a little story. We can share our stories. I'm just going to tell you about him. You're just going to tell me about him? 
the boy. Her name is or... Emily. Okay. Her favorite food is bananas. Okay. Because she is bananas. Oh, that's good. I mean, like this kind of banana. Uh, <laughs> and and R. And she bananas. lives at 505 West 30th Street, Down mm -hmm. Iowa, 52803. Cool. Does she have any powers? Oh, no. Nope. No powers, huh? Dude. Her birthday is okay, so March 3rd, 2003. He's three, three, three. She uh, must uh, be 17 right now. Hi. She's open up to drive. <laughs> <laughs> a cat can't drive. What if it's a monster cat? Maybe. Neither a dog. Neither oh, like that. You got it? Yeah. Becca, when you're ready, you can share us share with us about your monster if you like. There's another Z. Just one minute. Just one minute. Okay. Hey. Okay. I just want to test my hook. Okay. Test your hook out. Ooh. Oh. Be cool. Oh no! Oh no! Piece fell off. Maybe put some more glue on that piece, huh? It's alright. You stuck it back on. Um, Look. I don't know. No, because this is. I'm holding it without. I love it, Oscar. It's beautiful. Oh. I like the way I'm, you use the. You I'm ready. You spread out the color. You ready? What are these? Let's listen to Beckett's animal story. Or a little bit about his animal. His name is Mr. Ryan. And he lives in Chicago. Cool. Girl. And he belongs to a girl. Food. It's what is food. It? And what I'm sorry, I missed that part. And he's 40. He's 40? <laughs> Almost as old as me. And, separate, and his favorite food is uh, pizza. His favorite food's pizza? Cool. Does he have any special powers? Mm -hmm. He can turn people into ice blocks. I say He can turn into ice blocks. He can talk to ice blocks. He can turn people into ice blocks. Oh man, watch out! He can. His monster can turn people into ice blocks. No, <laughs> that's cool. I would just be frozen. You would just be frozen. Well, I hope you really enjoyed making mosaics today. And this book is here for you. So if you want to share your story with us or post your your mosaic on our like social media okay. and hashtag it, we'd love to see it. Okay, so thank you. Have thank fun you. making the monsters with you today. Yeah, thanks so much for joining us. I just have a couple little things here to share at the end. And um, we want to just thank you again and then thank our wonderful sponsor, Quad City Bank and Trust, for sponsoring this wonderful class today with Heidi.